Hi, my name is Kirk Carlson, and I'm here to share my value creation tip of the week. And today I want to share a really important idea. It's um, fundamental to everything we do in value creation. And it's called the value proposition. Uh, the value proposition is how you start uh, new innovations. Um, and it sets the direction for what you're going to do. So it's very fundamental. And the ideas I'm going to share with you, I think, um, can really help you, help your work uh, advance uh, a lot faster. You know, in big companies, often people give, um, you know, 50 <laughs> view graphs, presentations that last an hour or two. Um, uh, but with most of business, really, you need to boil it down to the fundamentals um, to really communicate the message. Because if somebody else can't repeat your message, they can't convince their buddies, their other partners, um, it, basically, it's going nowhere. You've got to find a way to really find the essence of what you're doing. And so that's what we want to talk about today. Um, how, do you, how do you really identify the core elements that if you can really identify them, will set you off in the right direction and also allow you to convince your partners, your teammates, and your investors that you really have a good idea. So that set us on a journey to figure that out. And we came up with the following four ingredients. The first is, what's the need? Well, that's no surprise. Uh, without a need, you, you're not going to be uh, create value for your customers. And they come in many forms, as you know. Some from health, for example, entertainment. Uh, there's a wide spectrum, unlimited number of needs in the world. Uh, the second was the approach, uh, A. Um, and the approach for a um, medical problem might be a new medical device, for example. And um, in entertainment, it might be Disney World. So I need and, and approach A. Uh, the third part is uh, the benefits per cost. Uh, benefits per cost is the definition of customer value. Uh, and it's subjective. It depends on your customer. And of course, the many different varieties of benefits and costs that you can put together. So for example, with a medical device, uh, it may prolong your life. Um, that might be the benefit of it, but it may be inconvenient. It may have other side effects, may be really expensive, lots of different things, benefits and costs. Same thing with entertainment. Uh, Disney World provides great experiences. Um, it's a lot of fun. The kids love it. But you might have to travel by plane to get there. It's expensive. And when you get there, you might have to wait in line for a long time. Uh, lots of things can go on um, that both benefits and costs. So uh, the, the hard part is, of course, even though your opinion is very important, we know that, uh, only your customer determines the value of your idea. So and it's subjective again. Uh, if they don't like it, of course, you go away. Your product goes away. They have to, uh, you have to do something for them that they love, and they're the only deciders about whether it's good or bad. OK, need, approach, benefits, per cost. And the last one is competition, C. Um, so the competition for a medical device might be a therapeutics. There might be a whole suite of different uh, therapies that you might pick from. Each one with benefits and costs, and you have to decide with your doctor. Um, for entertainment, uh, Disney World, there are other theme parks, there are lots of them. So you're competing with them. Uh, but there are other forms of uh, entertainment. You know, um, there are stadium events, there's uh, um, movie houses, uh, there's bingo, you know, there's lots of things. And uh, the last example uh, illustrates another point. Don't forget about the alternatives. So we often say, you know, consider glue. Uh, there are lots of different kinds of glue. So El Elmer's glue, there's lots of competition for that. But there are also alternatives. A uh, glue is about sticking things together. It's like bonding things together. So the alternatives there are screws and nails and staples and even magnets, lots of difference. So don't don't forget that. So that's the that's the, the our definition of our value proposition. N A B benefits per cost competition. Just four parts. Now uh, consider a couple things here. The first is, what happens if the need changes? Well, 
the chances a lot it's going to ripple through and change your approach and it might even change who your competition is. Alternatively, let's say your competition comes along and starts competing with you directly. You might have to change your approach. You might even have to change your need. Um, and the, the beauty of these, these four questions is uh, they interact, but it's concise enough so you can actually keep interacting to figure out what the answer is without getting all tied up in the complexity of uh, some of these other models with you know, 12, 15 kind of questions you're supposed to answer. Uh, the, the point here is if you can't get the fundamentals right, uh, you can't go forward. Um, you've got to really uh, get the fundamentals right. And let me do this little test with you. Um, so are these four questions fundamental? Well, what happens if you take the need away? Well, <laughs> okay. Uh, take away the approach, same problem. Take away the benefits because, well, then you can't articulate the value of your idea. And of course, there's always competition, especially globally these days. You're, you're always competing with people. So you've got to be have superior benefits compared to the competition. And the same thing is you've got to quantify this. You can't say bigger, better, faster, cheaper. We don't know what that means. We, we want you to really be very specific and, and be as quantitative as you can about, OK, if it's faster, is it 5% or is it 100%? 5% might not matter. 100% may change the game. Who knows? So you've got to do that. Now, I want to share with you now the biggest mistake we see almost every time. This is it. <laughs> it's called a big A, a big A. Um, the person comes in and they're in love with their idea. All they want to do is talk about their idea. And this is almost a disease. So when I was CEO of SRI, when, before we uh, got people to think this way, uh, people would come in and say, Kurt, I need three hours of your time. Give me, give me three hours. I've got, I, it's, my idea is so brilliant and it's, it's so complicated. I need three hours to tell you about it. Um, the need, don't worry about that. It's huge. The benefits, tremendous, and there's no competition. Kurt, you have three hours. Okay, now as a CEO, you don't want to say no to an enthusiastic person. Uh, if you do, they're, they're not going to blame themselves. They're going to blame you because they're going to say you don't get it, right? Um, and that's what happens a lot. So uh, the alternative is to explain to them, which we did, uh, you have to start by answering these four questions. And you typically would say, you explain it to them and say, um, come back, uh, answer these four questions, do the best you can. I mean, you're going to be guessing about some of this. That's OK. Uh, write down the best, you, uh, best estimate. And you can go back is over time, we'll, we'll refine their estimate. And if there are numbers we've kind of made up too much, we'll focus on them and we'll, we'll make them real. That's, that's it. You might wonder, you know, just four questions, right? how hard can this be? Well, I want to tell you, it's really, really hard. <laughs> um, I've done hundreds of these. Um, the people at SRI did hundreds of these, obviously, all the time. And I never got one right the first time, the 10th time, the 30th time. Um, High definition television, uh, which I worked on with my buddy Glenn Reitmeyer, uh, we did we iterated that one hundreds and hundreds of times. And we not only had the technical problems, we had the, the business problems, we had the competitive problems, and we had the government to somehow convince um, to go in a certain direction. So we had to we had to keep on refining our estimates of those because um, it was a lot to do. So that's my um, tip for today. Um, um, in your value creation activities, um, I'd recommend you start using NABCs, uh, the most fundamental questions um, that you can answer. Um, it's not the whole story, but it sets you in a direction. And if you can't answer those four questions, uh, you've got a problem uh, because you may be heading off in the wrong direction. But if you can really be specific and quantitative and really take a lot of the risk out of just those four questions, you're probably going to be going in a pretty good direction. It really does increase the chances of your success. So that's the tip for today. Um, hope to see you again. And um, remember, um, it's through innovation that we can make the world a better place. I look forward to seeing you again. Bye-bye.